reports of mass abduction of girls from a school in Zamfara in Nigeria. And I can tell you that the Secretary General condemns in the strongest possible terms and calls for their immediate and unconditional release. As we've said before, schools should always remain a safe space to learn without fear of violence. A uh, full statement uh, will be coming shortly from the Secretary General on this. And according to UNICEF uh, in Nigeria, the latest attack happened overnight in the government girls' secondary school in Jangjebe in northwest Nigeria. Um, Peter Hawkins, the UNICEF representative in Nigeria, called on those responsible to release the girls immediately and for the government to take steps to ensure their safe release and the safety of other school children in the country. Uh, earlier this morning, the Secretary General um, released a statement on the UNFCCC's initial nationally determined contributions synthesis report, which was released uh, this morning. The Secretary General said the report is a red alert for our planet. It shows governments are nowhere close to the level of ambition needed to limit climate change to 1.5 degrees and meet the goals of the Paris Agreement. He called for major emitters to step up and with much more ambition, emissions reduction targets for 2030 in their nationally determined uh, contributions, as well as for the November UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow in the UK. Decision makers must walk the talk, he said. That full statement was shared. Uh, on Myanmar, you will have seen that the Secretary General Special Advisor, Christine schreiner Bergener briefed the General Assembly virtually this morning. She said she, she again strongly condemned the recent steps taken by the military and urged member states to collectively send a clear signal in support of democracy there. There is no justification for the military's action and we must continue to call for the renewed reversal of this impermissible action, exhausting all collective and bilateral channels to restore Myanmar's path on democratic reform, she said. Her uh, statement was shared with you. Uh, on the ground, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that conflict continues to cause civilian casualties and displace people across Myanmar. More than 2,000 people were displaced in northern Shan State in February due to clashes involving the Myanmar Armed Forces and ethnic armed organizations. Nine civilians were reportedly killed and eight others injured, including children in clashes in two towns in northern Shan on February 5th. Our humanitarian uh, colleagues also are concerned about the continued fighting in southeastern Myanmar. More than 5,000 people are reportedly displaced in Kayin State and the Bago region due to fighting between the Army and the Karen National Union. Despite facing challenges, including the closures of banks, as well as concern for sa staff safety and security, we, along with our humanitarian partners, are continuing to deliver aid and protection services in conflict-affected areas. We continue to call for safe and unimpeded humanitarian access to all areas where humanitarian needs are and for all parties to the conflict to take every precaution to prevent civilian harm. Uh, the humanitarian response plan for Myanmar for this year uh, needs $267.5 million to help nearly a million people in help, excuse me, to help nearly a million people in conflict areas of Myanmar. And you will see in the Security Council this morning, Tor Wenesslan, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, briefed the Security Council on the electoral processes underway among Israelis and Palestinians. He said the UN will continue to work collectively to support the Palestinian people, including through facilitating and supporting preparations towards uh, these, their important elections coming up. Elections will also help clear the path towards restoring a legitimate political horizon to realize a two-state solution. Mr. Wenesland warned that the council, the council that COVID-19 crisis remains persistent health threat that has triggered a massive economic fallout. Uh, meanwhile, unilateral steps on the ground are eroding the prospect for establishing a viable and contiguous Palestinian state, moving the parties further from constructive dialogue and compromise. The UN is continuing its engagement to meet these challenges. A uh, quick reminder that on Monday, we will convene a virtual high-level pledging event for the humanitarian crisis in Yemen, co-hosted by the government of Sweden and Switzerland. It will take place uh, starting at 9 a.m. New York time. Pledges will be announced uh, at the event. The Secretary General will address the opening. We'll get you his remarks ahead of time. And there will be a press conference immediately after the event 
with Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock and the co-hosts, and that's at 1.10 uh, p.m. Questions from media can be submitted in advance up to two hours before the press starts to our colleagues at OCHA, and that will be broadcast on web uh, TV. And on Nigeria, uh, sorry, I read Nigeria. A uh, quick note from UNICEF uh, today, uh, our friends across the street released a report that says a new approach is needed to ensure that unaccompanied migrant and asylum-seeking children in the U.S. receive proper reception, care, and support services. The report provides a roadmap showing how the U.S. government and its partners can draw on experiences in the U.S. and globally to develop a long-term vision for reception, care, and protection of unaccompanied children. UNICEF says that gang violence, extortion, endemic poverty, and lack of learning and earning opportunities are part of daily lives for millions of children and families across northern Central America. The pandemic and recent natural disasters, including hurricanes Eta and Iota, have made conditions even more challenging for them. UNICEF urges government to end child immigration detention and scale up family and community-based reception, care, and support children, both in the United States and across the region. And our colleagues at the Central, in Central African Republic at the Peacekeeping Mission report that it, they continue to assist in the preparation of the forthcoming legislative election scheduled for March 14th. The Mission's Human Rights Division has established and deployed a task force to investigate violations and abuses by all parties in response to numerous allegations of targeted attacks against civilians participating in the electoral process. Working uh, along with the Central African Army and the internal security forces, the mission is also participating earlier this week in the destruction of 89 explosive items and munitions collected during the first phase of demobilization and disarmament in Ndele. And in Bangui, the mission also organized a four-day capacity-building workshop on gender-based violence for members of the internal uh, defense forces. This was done to better understand and address the security needs of the general population, particularly women and children, in order to protect victims and serve local communities. A few more quick updates. Uh, this one from Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, we are, as we have been saying, we have, we have been ready to deploy an initial independent interagency humanitarian assessment mission to Nagorno-Karabakh and other conflict-affected areas in the earliest opportunity. We have informed all relevant actors in that regard. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the UN Refugee Agency, and relevant UN entities continue to engage with all concern on the specific parameters and timing of the deployment of the planned mission. The latest official communication was sent on 19th February. The mission hopes to get a clear picture of the humanitarian situation on the ground broadly and broadly assess the conditions for safe, voluntary, and dignified and sustainable returns of all displaced populations. We look forward to a formal reply to our latest... Cop uh, I keep telling people never to call me here, but it never works. Um, Sorry. The mission hopes to get a clear picture of the humanitarian situation on the ground and broadly assess the conditions for a safe, voluntary, dignified, and sustainable return to all displaced people. We look forward to formally reply to our latest communication. We call on relevant groups to cooperate fully with the UN entities to ensure their unfettered and speedy access to conduct such a mission, which will be solely based on the humanitarian principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence. Um, quick uh, vaccine updates, one from Côte d'Ivoire, which today became the second country in Africa to receive the COVAX vaccine. That's after Ghana. Uh, our UN team on the ground is proud to have supported the authorities in that effort. The country has received more than half a million COVID-19 vaccine doses, which were transported across the world by UNICEF. Our resident coordinator, Philippe Poinceau, also welcomed the efforts of all partners who have contributed to this massive global country-wide effort with meticulous planning around logistics, preparedness, and distribution. And on Monday, the vaccination will kick off, prioritizing health workers and more exposed at-risk groups. The UN has repurposed over $12 million to support Côte d'Ivoire to address the multiple impacts of the pandemic. And an update from the Bronx, where later this afternoon, the Secretary General of these United Nations, Antonio Guterres, will receive his second uh, shot 
uh, he will receive it at the Morris Academy for Collaborative Studies. Um, he will. He also. He will have a conversation with the site manager from the New York uh, City Health Department about uh, the importance of fair vaccine access and information. Uh, we will have a UNTV team and photo on the ground. We'll ask them to replay all of that uh, for you. Uh, and as a reminder, the Secretary General is above the age of 65, and that's why he's getting it. Um, we have a new uh, resident coordinator to announce, and that is our resident coordinator in Kenya, Stephen Jackson of Ireland. He has been confirmed by the government. Stephen's full biography is on the UN Sustainable Development Group's website. We want to say thank you to Brunei, Dar es Salaam, South Africa, and Vietnam. They have all paid their membership dues in full, bringing us up to 60. I'm almost there. 1240, I feel like an auctioneer here. Um, at 1245, there will be a virtual Security Council, or maybe a little later, a virtual Security Council stakeout on the Middle East peace process with current EU members. These are of the Security Council. These are Estonia, France, Ireland, and former members Belgium and Germany, and they will be joined by Norway and the United Kingdom. 2 p.m., the President of the Security Council, Barbara Woodward, will brief in person at the stakeout following the Middle East peace process briefing. Monday, 12.30, the um, president of the Security Council for the merry month of March, that's Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield of the United States of America, will brief you on the program of work. And I just want to end, if you'll let me, on a sad and somewhat reflective uh, note and say a few words about the Guernica Tapestry, which had been hanging outside the Security Council stakeout for some 35 years. Nelson Rockefeller Jr., who owns the tapestry, recently notified us of his intention to retrieve it. The tapestry was returned to Mr. Rockefeller earlier this month. We, of course, thank the Rockefeller family for having loaned this powerful and iconic work of art for, to the United Nations for so long. On a personal note, I think like all of you, I feel a little sad and a, and a sense of loss uh, looking at that empty wall that was recently graced by the tapestry. Uh, the tapestry was not only a moving reminder of the horrors of war, but because of where it stood, it was also a witness to so much history that unfolded outside of the Security Council since 1985. Standing side by side with generations of journalists reporting world-changing events that took place at the stakeout. I can tell you that the Secretary General and others tried very hard uh, to keep uh, the tapestry uh, here, uh, but we were not successful. The Secretary will review options for art to be displayed outside of the Council Chamber that will be undertaken by the UN Arts Committee, and the Secretary General's Chef de Cabinet, uh, Mario Luis Viotti, informed the Council yesterday, given its proximity. Celia, and then James. Uh, thank you, Stefan. <clears throat> I uh, Le micro ne marche pas. There we go. Ça va? Oui. Yeah. Um, I read in the Epoch Times that uh, leaked email um, what I want to know is did the UN give the names of China's dissident as written in that article? To where? To the China's. Leaked emails confirm UN gave names of dissident to CCP. That is not true. Never? No. Um, Mr. Bayes. So the General Assembly meeting today, mm -hmm. um, as you'll be aware, the ambassador of um, Myanmar surprised many people, one of those rare moments where an ambassador speaks against the events in his own country. Um, you heard from the special envoy. She said it's important the international community does not lend legitimacy or recognition to this mm -hmm. military regime. So given that, um, one assumes they may try to sack him. What would be your message to member, what's the Secretary General's message to member states um, if they try and sack him, given that the, 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 the special envoy uh, who speaks with the Secretary General says there should be no legitimacy? Look, the, the Secretary General's message is one of support for the people of Myanmar who very clearly expressed uh, their democratic wishes and for the uh, military to respect it. Who sits 
in the chamber, who recognizes, uh, who is recognized as an auth authorized uh, representative, that's an issue for member states to decide or challenge uh, through the uh, credentials committee, and I'm sure my colleague Brendan will um, expound on that uh, on on that process. But I thought it was it was a very uh, it was a very moving moment, and frankly, a very courageous moment from what I saw. And given you've used the word courageous, certainly some I've spoken to, including UN officials, have said that they would be worried about his family in Myanmar. What is the message from the Secretary General to the military authorities if they were considering any sort of reprisals? Look, no, no one should be harmed. No one should be... Uh, thrown in jail for expressing their opinion. Uh, no one's family, in, and, and that goes for their families. Families should not be punished for the actions of, a, of another member. There needs to be freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, uh, and there hasn't been, and we've been very concerned about that. Can I have one last question on the Guernica, please? Yes, and then we'll go um, to Edie. Have you been given any indication by Mr. Rockefeller, whose mother clearly um, sat down with the then Secretary General for a long time and made this very long-term loan. Mm -hmm. It was clearly mm -hmm. the family's wishes that it was going to stand. Why have they changed their mind? Why has he changed his mind? Is he short of money? Is he selling it? No, uh, we have no, no indication. I mean, it is, it was a tremendously generous loan from Happy Rockefeller. Uh, Nelson Rockefeller Jr.'s mother, if, I, if I'm correct. Uh, to say that we enjoyed having it here would be an understatement. Uh, I mean, it was really, um, I think it derived, the, the, the tapestry in itself was extremely powerful, but it also derived its power from where it stood. Um, and that can't be replicated. Um, but I can't speak for I, I can't speak uh, for them. You say it can't be replicated. Apparently, there are two others of those tapestries. No, no, no. I'm saying I mean, the the the. the no, no. I'm just, I'm just wondering: is the UN trying to see if no, uh, I mean, one of the other owners might want uh, to I, one of the other that, ta tapestries? Uh, I haven't gone that that gone down that road yet. I can ask my colleagues. Uh, Edie. A couple of questions, Steph. Um, today. Uh, the Myanmar authorities uh, used rubber bullets against uh, demonstrators, protesters. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment about the use of rubber bullets, which, I'm, which of course, can be deadly? We once again stand against it. Uh, any use of disproportionate use of, of force uh, should not be tolerated. Uh, the people of Myanmar, from what we've seen, uh, want to express uh, themselves, and they've been expressing themselves peacefully, uh, and that is an inherent human right, and that right needs to be respected. Um, secondly, um, there was another massive uh, abduction of schoolgirls in Nigeria today, over 300 by unidentified gunmen. Uh, does the Secretary General have any reaction to that? Yes, we, I had something right in the beginning, uh, that we, we, of course, condemn the, uh, uh, this, this abduction. There's an official statement coming out very soon, but I, I'll, oh. I'll give you my notes from a few <laughs> Thank, minutes ago. Thank you. And, okay. and wait, one last thing. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the United States uh, Biden administration's first military action, this airstrike in Syria. Um, yes, I can tell you that uh, the Secretary General is following closely the reports of a U.S. airstrike targeting sites in eastern Syria in response to recent attacks against the U.S. and coalition personnel in Iraq. He remains concerned about the volatile situation in the region and calls on all concerned sides to exercise restraint and avoid escalation. Uh, I'll come back for a second round. Uh, Errol, and then Abdel Hamid, and then I'll go to you, Carla. Errol, you're muted. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, highly appreciated your words on Gernika. I am the one uh, that then shares institutional memory in August 1995, then Ambassador, U.S. Ambassador Madeleine Albright, in front of Gernika, show showed 
us the picture of what turned to be a genocide in Srebrenica. Uh, my question is regarding Guernica. What actually did Secretary General talk to Nelson, somebody from the Nelson uh, Foundation? What kind of exchange letter or so did he? They, they, were, they, were, they, they were letters exchanged, uh, phone calls were made by people in, this, uh, in the Secretariat who deal with the, with the art in this building. As I think the Secretary General said to one of your colleagues yesterday, he tried very hard and he did not succeed. Uh, but again, this is, uh, no one is contesting their, uh, their right to, to take back something that was on loan. It was not... It was, not our, it was not the property of the United Nations. It's the property of Nelson Rockefeller, Jr. Okay. Is, it fair, is it fair to say, if I can just follow up, please. Is it fair to say that uh, it was um, rather than any suspicious, I'm a journalist, I have right to, to be suspicious, suspicious, some political motivation, disagreement with I, I, Secretary General? I, I, I will let you... Uh, Say and 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 uh, you know and, and think what you, what you want. I have no. It, it was a transaction. I'm not aware from our end of any political other kind of motive. I was just they own it. They asked for it back. We give it back to them. Transaction. Did it? Did it? Did it came? Uh, really? Uh, yes. I know it's difficult, but it's important for my story. Sorry, Steph. Uh, did it came somehow as a surprise to the Secretary General to to UN? Uh, yes. That request to be returned yes. back. Yes, it was not expected. But I would, I, I would, for in terms of motivation, I would encourage you to ask uh, the owners, Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. I have few questions, and I hope you you bear with me to ask my four short questions. And I know you will. Uh, other, others, uh, others have asked more in a row. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. To ask a question, Michel Tashile today issued a strong statement calling on Saudi Arabia to allow freedom of speech, freedom of uh, assembly, and called on Saudi Arabia to release those who are in jail unjustly. Does the SG stand with this statement? I think the the. The High Commissioner for, Ref for Human Rights today delivered her kind of, for lack of a better word, her, word, her annual state of, of human rights in country-specific situations. That is her job. That is her remit. Uh, that is her mandate. And the Secretary General stands fully uh, behind, behind her. Your second question. Thank you. Would the UN be helpful in... Uh pressuring Israel to allow Palestinians living in East Jerusalem to participate in the forthcoming elections? I'm not aware of our, our involvement. I'm not aware of our involvement in, in that, but I can find out. Your third question. In the last two experiences, they put so much uh, difficulty. And third question. Uh, do you have any update from uh, Gargarad in Western Sahara? I mean, you remember the Polisario said that we are no longer bound by the ceasefire agreement signed between both parties in 1991. So do you have any information what's going on there? No, we have not, uh, we've not received any information that the situation in Gergarat uh, has changed in any way. And my last question. Maybe that'll be the daily double. Let's go. Uh, thank you. My last question today, Stefan, is the 27th anniversary of the massacre committed by an Israeli terrorist entered the Palestinian Mo Ibrahimi Mosque in Hebron, gunning down in the morning prayer 29 Palestinians and wounding 150. And his tomb now became a shrine in Israel. Do you have any statement on this set of page? I mean, we, we, we would refer and reiterate uh, the condemnations that we issued uh, at the time, and as always, of course, our thoughts are, our thoughts are with the victims uh, of this crime. Okay, James Reinel. 
Um, hi, Stefan. Thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to flag something and then ask a question. I think the press conferences you announced for Monday at 12.30 with Linda Thomas-Greenfield, and then I think Mark Lowcock about 1.10. I just want to I just want to say maybe... Yes, sorry, I, I, was, I, I, was, I was thinking the same thing as you as I was reading it. Uh, we'll see if our OCHA colleagues can start a little later. I'm sure it won't be a problem. We would not want to ask you... We, we would not want to make you choose. Sure, it's your two headliners, right? I know. Go ahead, James. Um, uh, yeah, so over in Libya, um, uh, interim Prime Minister De Beba was meant to um, have agreed the um, uh, individuals that are going to be part of his cabinet, his government, and that hasn't happened. Uh, what's the UN statement on this, and uh, is uh, the interim PM still the right man for the job? Uh, again, it's not for the UN to decide who the right person is, right man or right woman is for uh, any leadership post uh, in, in Libya. Um, we've seen that uh, the statements yesterday from the Prime Minister designate uh, when he said he'd submitted to the Speaker of the House of Representatives his proposal for a structure for national unity government, as well as the criteria, I think, for the members of that government. Uh, we're encouraged that he further indicated that his proposal is in line with the roadmap adopted by the Libyan Political Forum under the auspices of the UN mission, which requires, among other things, 30% uh, of the national unity government position be filled by women and young candidates. We now encourage all relevant stakeholders in Libya to proceed with the formation of a new government of national unity without delay, including the convening of a formal session of the House of Representatives to hold a vote of confidence in the PM designates government proposal. Uh, Carla, and then we'll go to Majid. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I, is there a distinction between a loan and a gift to the United Nations? I know the Chinese tapestry of the Great Wall and the delegates' uh, lounge is uh, practically an icon. Is that a gift or a loan? I, this well, is I mean, I, to me, I, the, the distinction between when I loan somebody my car and when I give somebody my car, if I give it, I can't take it back. If I loan it, yeah. I can take it back. Did the Chinese... I, I, I don't know. I'll find out about the status of the Chinese. Also, the land on which the United Nations was built was donated or it was it, it lent it or... Was, we, we own the land on which we stand which was a gracious gift of the Rockefeller family, I would, might add. Yeah. Uh, but that was a gift. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Majid. All right, no Majid. Um, OK, uh, Celia. Uh. Stefan, is it normal for the US to conduct an airstrike in Syria without informing the UN? That's a question I think you should save for Monday. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I would save it for Monday. Um, OK, uh, Errol? Uh, two questions on vaccination process. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, yesterday in Brussels, the European Union um, were talking about uh, introducing a digital passport uh, on COVID vaccination. And I asked you that before you told me about the importance of unified approach. But I uh, would like uh, you to address this from the point of view of human, human rights. What is the position of Secretary General? Well, I think that, that's, ex uh, that's exactly it. We need not only need a coordinated, uh, a coordinated approach, but one that respects people's human rights, rights to privacy, uh, that doesn't increase uh, in inequality. So we need to be able to find a way that helps to get people's ability to travel again, uh, whether for trade, for tourism, uh, to get the economies going. Uh, but that needs to be done with full respect for people's rights to basic human rights, right, right to privacy, and to avoid stigmatization. OK. Uh, possible? Sorry? Is Ev that possible? Every, one? Everything is possible. Ask your second question. Yes, my second question is you, uh, several times, many times actually, you said that uh, nations in, in Europe and in Western Balkans, which I'm interested in, uh, should 
cooperate with COVAX. Uh, we have a serious problem now with COVAX since uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina stays, stays as the only country in the region that didn't receive any of the vaccines, although they paid for it. Uh, Look, I, what I, would I, be... Uh, I don't know what the exact situation in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, whether they applied for COVAX or through other ways. Uh, well, then, uh, I know our UN teams on the ground are working with countries to try to facilitate the COVAX. One of the issues, obviously, is the lack of uh, the not enough insufficient funds, but we can look into that particular situation for you. Uh, can you get back up? I, I can always try. Uh, Gloria, and then we'll uh, leave it to uh, Brendan to take it. Yes, my question is, has the Nigerian military attache at the UN made any comments on the kidnapping? And is there a feeling that it could be for ransom? Or it's just cruel terrorism. Is there any hint? I don't. Of we we what don't. Uh, as, f as far as I've seen from the press reports, uh, there's not been any uh, uh, claim of responsibility. Uh, whatever the horrific motivation for this uh, doesn't really matter. In the end, people, the, these girls need to be released at once without condition. Uh, for the Nigerians, I think you should. I don't know. You should speak to the Nigerian mission. Speaking on behalf of the General Assembly, President will now be Brendan. Okay, thank you. Hasta lunes.